103 meters. It's pretty deep. Why would you go that deep? I mean, what for? Not a hell of a lot down there to see. It's got to be really dark and really cold. And why would you put your life in danger? Those are the exact questions my mom, who's in the audience, asked when we decided to go deep. It's pretty much the same kind of questions everybody else asks us when we say, oh, we're we going diving. But we didn't tell your mom how deep we, we were going. We did not. Yeah. So um, I started diving before Gavin. He started recreational diving at around 2000, and he proposed to me under the water, 25 meters. He wrote it on a slate, and it was quite evil because he knew I couldn't back chat him. Uh, we started um, tech diving in <laughs> 2007. Um, because I wanted to dive with coelacanths and he wanted to dive the wrecks. So typically, the recreational diving goes down to 40 meters as a maximum. If you go below that, then you need to start looking at things like decompression, mixed gases, nitrogen narcosis, and all the other technical stuff that goes with that. So we started off as noobs on the open water scheme of things. You move through the knowledge uh, all the way to advanced nitrox, and uh, from advanced nitrox, uh, you get a depending on the agency that you're involved in, you have to have done X number of dives. So 100 dives with X number down to X depth. Um, and we kind of ticked all those boxes, but we had no idea what we were actually in for. So I also didn't realize that I was stepping into a male-dominated sport. And as a creative, um, all this equipment and precision and whatever was kind of overwhelming. So that, that is a one dive to 50 meters of training dive, and that's just the, some of the equipment. The rest of it was already in the water. It was kind of overwhelming for me initially. Um, underestimation was a big part of what we did. Uh, it's a very gear-intensive sport, uh, and we weren't able to use anything from our recreational side. So we not only underestimated the gear, but we underestimated the time, the effort, the energy, and the dedication it would take to learn this stuff. And our kids missed us for a whole bunch of weekends. So we progressed from nomoxic trimix to full trimix, and there's, there's a process in terms of more dives and more dives and step dives, so there's not an um, overload in terms of what you're learning. Whatever you're learning really needs to be second nature, so that if something does go wrong, you can save yourself very quickly. And crisis preparation is a key part of it. And it's not necessarily about if it happens, it's when it happens. So we do scenarios, and each dive is a different dive in terms of a different scenario that we have to get used to. The trick is, with technical diving, that you have to be independent. With recreational diving, you've got the buddy system. So this is the kind of gear we wear. We do uh, open circuit scuba. So you have a, a big twin set on your back, which weighs about 24 kilos on land. You have a bunch of side slings, uh, which are carrying your travel gas or your uh, deco gas. So you can see there's a hell of a lot of gear you're busy dragging around underwater. So each side sling has got a different mixed gas that you have. And you've got to switch the gases at, at specific levels that you go down or whether you're coming up. Each um, tank has got a regulator that you breathe from separately, and it's got a gauge, so it tells you um, how much air is in each tank. You've also got computers that tell you, give you information. You've got to have two so that there's redundancy built into it. So what can go wrong? Tons of stuff can go wrong. You can end up with a catastrophic uh, equipment failure, which will kind of result in death. You can end up with a mask failure or a computer failure. You have backups on you, you abort the dive. Or you can end up running out of gas, which is actually what happened to this particular diver, and that kind of also results in you know, death. So that turns a lot of people off recreational diving, but I would challenge you, on the road here tonight, on your way, you probably faced as many dangers as we do under the water. The key is that we don't have to face the taxis underwater. So one of the things that uh, we need to understand is how do we enjoy the awesomeness of diving instead of being worried about the death all the time? Well, um, from my point of view, I was deathly afraid of leaving my children fatherless. So I had to actually get over that fear and believe that I could achieve everything I wanted to achieve and then just go ahead, get in the water, enjoy the dive and have a jaw every single time, obviously having done all the prep before. So the build-up to the big dive, 103, we had to do... Lots and lots of 50-meter dives, 70-meter dives, 80-meter dives. But the one that stuck in our minds was on the SS Thistlegorm in Egypt. Maximum is only 30 meters, but it was so cool to watch the recreational dives come and go, come and go while we stay down there. So a lot of planning involved. Um, you do step-up dives in order to ensure that you know your kit, you know the depths, and you feel comfortable. You should also be physically in shape, and we were physically in shape at the time. 
Um, you also really shouldn't be a smoker, and technical diving helped me quit smoking uh, all those years ago uh, in order to be able to breathe of death. So the challenges when, di when um, doing a dive, especially over overseas, is the whole um, technical part of it. You have to find a place that can do the mixed gases properly and reliable, have a support crew that you know that you can rely on, and then of course there's all the costs with all this extra gear that you're traveling with. So the day arrived, uh, the big dive, uh, we were all prepared, uh, we'd done our planning, done our preparation, uh, we put our twin sets on, had our slings with us, uh, wandered off, actually it was waddled off to the ocean, uh, and just simply plopped ourselves in. We descended uh, at a very slow pace, uh, and probably about four minutes to get down to depth, and Ricky earlier was talking about running, you can imagine how far he could sprint in uh, 10 seconds, uh, 100 meters, 10 seconds, he'd probably do a pretty good job. 103 meters is very far down. Uh, it's a hell of a long way when you look up and there is a lot of ocean between you and the surface, so no way to get out. The view from down there was phenomenal. We had uh, vis uh, horizontally of about 60 meters up to the support divers, vis uh, vertically pretty much the same as well, um, and then obviously all around us uh, there were loads of fish, so it proves there are things that deep. There's also no difference between a 70 meter and a 100 meter dive. So there we are under the arch. Um, I can see the dude that we showed you earlier dead below us at 120, but I actually didn't fe feel any fear on this specific dive. The, the training dives and the preparation dives, absolutely yes, but on this one, it was actually just sheer bliss. Sheer bliss. So we were down there for only seven minutes, and that seven minutes was paid for by doing uh, two hours of decompression stops on the way toward the surface. Absolutely amazing, incredible dive. We actually got out ecstatic. It's the best dive I've done in my life. But the best part of it was actually doing that dive with my technical buddy partner and my wife. <laughs>